very good at what she does. We may find it abhorrent what she's doing. Same thing with Sarah Sanders. But look at those women standing up and the beatings that they take. And they take them every day. From me, from you, from all of us, right? And they take them. That's pretty powerful when you think that these these, these women are in these positions. So, so on that score, I'd say he's done something well. On, on another score, he's a change agent. He's, he's a, the wrong change agent. But he's a change agent, and I think I do agree that government, as it stood, needed to be changed. I think, uh, so, then, so then let's table all that and say, how is our change agent doing, and how is he, and I, and, you know, the worst things, I think, is he's um, igniting the base urges of humans, right? Well, I think that's... <laughs> well, he's, I mean, he's, he's, yes. you know, and he's doing it at a time when desperation is at an all-time high. Uh, I think any time... You know, this is my big thing right now. Our unemployment numbers are just false. And, and then we equate it to the, in, the addiction increases and the sexual transmitted uh, right. disease epidemic that we have. There, there's the, the American population is in a race to escapism as a way of living, right? And... He's not helping. He's actually, you know, kind of throwing poppy seeds on them. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah, it's like, like he's, it's keeping, there's, there's, it's a, it's a, it's an incredibly frightening uh, time that we're in right now. It's very Hitler-esque. I, I do want to, I would do want to talk a, a minute about the new part of your company that you're starting. As, uh, as everyone knows with me, we lost my stepdaughter due to addiction. And um, so many people, as we are just discussing, yeah. having these issues. Yeah. But you're starting a new part of your company yeah. that helps deal directly with that, particularly in areas where there may not be a, as much of a presence of psychiatric help. Absolutely. Tell um, us a minute about that. Yeah, thank you. So, um, yeah, so, so our company um, is dedicated to health care and, and uh, health care access and revenue cycle, you know, administration. Um, but we deal primarily with uh, Medicaid patients. Um, we talk to about 120,000 of them a month in different parts of the country, and, and we're, we're continuing to grow in that space. Um, and because we can't deliver, I don't believe anybody can deliver a service without listening to the end user and what, their, what is their experience with that service. So I consider my job to be the ear to the ground. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I create a healthy place for employees to work and thrive, and I'm going to listen. And I was listening to patient circumstances around the country, particularly in the middle part of America, and we hear them. They, they call us. They, they call our clients, and, and we talk to them. Um, and for some of them, we have to uh, talk to them about uh, financial qualification for certain uh, services if they don't have enough money to cover their care and, uh, and for some reason they're in a state where there wasn't Medicaid expansion or what have you. Um, and we, we started getting exposed to the deep depression that was existing within uh, patient populations all around the country, particularly ones who were really you know, hand to mouth, uh, or living in homeless shelters, etc. Then we had some, um, because we're in an environment where um, we recognize that if you're dealing with potential trauma incoming, you could also have residual trauma. But we've also had some rather extreme traumatic experiences from our employees because we create an environment where they can feel safe to talking about. And I mean, we've. You know, we had one young woman whose boyfriend was shot and killed right in front of her uh, out in, this was, Win I think it was Winchester, Manassas, a couple years ago. Um, and she, ca she came in a different woman, a changed woman. Um, so we started thinking, what can we do about this? And I was privileged enough to be a part of um, uh, Governor-elect Northam's uh, policy group on the opioid crisis. And I went down to Richmond 
this was in December before the inauguration. And, um, you know, we've really been talking about, you know, how do we, how do we solve this problem? It's this very expensive problem. And, and there's this, you know, notion of, I need help right now, like right now, in right. this moment. Where do they go? Who do they get to? There, there are these hotlines that they can call, but that's not a right now moment. That's a please hold moment. And if someone's in a real crisis, please hold is not the message right. they need to hear. So um, um, I was in this room with providers and pharmacists, and they were talking about their challenges, and it just hit me like a ton of bricks that it was theirs is a volume problem. It's a volume problem, and technology needs to be there to solve the volume problem. And I had been working with this video company, and you know, they, my a former colleague who's now their CEO was selling it to me, you know, because it's a new right. technology that can handle high volume. Uh, and but I, but I was thinking, yeah, I think this is the future. I do. I believe it's in the future. Not just healthcare, but, you know, as artificial intelligence takes over simple stuff, harder stuff is going to require human in all channels. So it's it's one-on-one. -on -one. It's one-on-one. -on -one, and I thought, well, you know, I've always thought video is going to give a more personal, but it's also more efficient, right? Chatting is inefficient. You Miscommunications happen. Chat, phone calls, emails, miscommunications happen. Face-to-face, -face, very hard to have a miscommunication. But how do you do face-to-face -face without brick and mortar? And how do you do it in high volume? So this, this video platform can do that. But I, I was like, I don't know where I'm going to use it because i got to get my clients on this. And then I was at this thing, and as I was walking out, I went, that's it. Right. Centralized team of licensed clinical social workers. All you need is Internet access, and there's broadband initiatives going on in all these rural communities all around the country. Uh, but even then, all you need is a cell phone. So we had this app developed for us, and we're uh, just standing up. We'll see our first patients. Uh, it's a peer-to-peer -peer counseling right now uh, for some of our current clients, patients that we already know need a little bit of extra support. Mm -hmm. uh, legislation has to catch up with us, uh, so we're working with some folks that you've introduced us to. Thank you for that, which is why I say I find my roar with after meeting you. Uh, <laughs> Um, or maybe you're teaching me how to harness my roar into words. Um, but uh, we're now working with some state legislators. Uh, uh, we're working with an organization out in California who's doing the same in California because we, we definitely need some legislation to catch up with us. Um, but our goal is to have a centralized team of licensed clinical social workers through this application that gives video access right now when they need it. Boom. What a great Press service. a button and there it is. And assuming that the rapport is built, that's now their person. They don't have to be pounced around to the next person. They don't get put it. This becomes their person that they then can connect to directly uh, in perpetuity. What a great thing. What a great way to find your roar. It was so great to meet you. It's glad to have you here. Thank you so much. You're doing so many good things for so many of us women. But now we have the opportunity as I close out platitudes, find your war. I do this funky thing okay. where I turn and, yeah. I, and I open my mouth and then yeah. I put this war. So okay. if you're going to turn toward your left, we're going to open our mouth. I turn toward my left. Platitudes. Okay. Find your roar. Now here we go. Open your mouth. Controversial. <laughs> yeah, I told you I'd talk about it. <laughs>